Hallelujah, Jesus. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. I thought of something as, that, as they were singing that song. Do you know there is not a more powerful entity on the face of the earth than where you're sitting tonight? Brother Robbie, there's nothing that has more effect and more potential for effectiveness in the world within which we live than the church of the living God. It's not the building, but it's the body of Christ. I talked in leadership class this morning about Jesus invested in 12. And one of them was a devil. Then he was replaced and they managed to turn the world upside down. Saints of God, we have got to accept the responsibility that we've been given to by being filled with the Holy Ghost. There's a responsibility that when God fills you with His Spirit to make an impact in your world, you are the light of the world. A city that is set up on a hill cannot be hid. Amen. Hope. Isaiah 12 and 2 says, Behold, God is my salvation. I will trust and not be afraid. For the Lord Jehovah is my strength and my song. He also is become my salvation. Therefore with joy, everybody say with joy, shall you draw water out of the wells of salvation. I want to preach to you for a few minutes tonight. But I promise you, you've got to receive it. You've got to receive the Word of God. Amen? Amen. On this subject, trust the well. Trust the well. Pray with me right now. God, I love you. Thank you for your spirit. Thank you for your promises. Thank you for your power. Thank you, God, that you ministered to us tonight and we've worshipped you in song. But I pray, Lord, that you'll let this word, this everlasting word, this powerful, forever settled in heaven word, I pray, God, that you'll let it begin to course through our minds and our hearts and our spirit as our lives are changed forever. Let this word go out, God, and fall on good ground and plant seed and bring up fruit for your word, for your glory. In the name of Jesus, we pray. Amen, amen. You may be seated. Hallelujah. 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 Trust. Everybody say trust. Trust, trust means the firm belief in the reliability, truth, ability, or strength of someone or something. Good relationships are built on trust. Amen? Amen. Bad relationships usually begin with a broken trust of some sort. Trust is an emotional and a logical act. Emotional trust involves making yourself vulnerable. So to uh, put, invest in someone or, or, or trust in someone without being afraid that they will betray you. Making yourself vulnerable in, in, in their trust. Logical trust is trust that is only given after we assess the risk, Brother Pete. After we evaluate the situation and we come to the conclusion that that person can be trusted. Or that entity can be trusted. Trust is something that is being held on to now. Held in reserve. Or else given with great trepidation. And is in fact a dying characteristic. We have come to assume that no one can be trusted. I've, I've heard it once, I've heard it a thousand times. Don't do business with family. Don't do business with church members. Don't do business with friends. And for some reason, that just does not jive with me. That does not set good with me. If we should be able to trust anybody, it should be our brothers and sisters of the household of faith. 
It should be our friends and family that we should be able to trust. If you don't grasp anything else out of this message tonight, is we need a purpose in our heart that I'm going to be trustworthy. That I'm going to be trustworthy. That people are going to be able to trust me. Economic scandals, Ponzi schemes, and, and junk bond trading and such like have made folks leery of even investing for retirement. We're going back to the coffee can in the icebox days. Religious scandals with ministers and pastors misusing and abusing their authority, both in finances and in moral failings. School scandals. Teachers, heard it again this week, teachers being involved in inappropriate relationships with students. School shootings and immoral teachings in our schools and a refusal to give Christianity at least a fair time in the schedule has led us to determine that there's no safe place for our kids to go and we don't even trust the school. A common saying that we have a society that we as a society have come to accept as a norm, Brother Pete. We have come to accept it as a fact that no one can be trusted. But I want to let you know tonight that there is one that you can trust. He's never failed a soul. He's never told a lie. He's never repeated a secret. He's never stopped loving. He's never stopped blessing. He's never failed to listen and He's never been defeated. His name is Jesus and that name is a strong tower and the righteous run into it and are safe. Jeremiah tells us in his great lamentation book that great is His faithfulness. He is fair. He is just. He is merciful. He is slow to anger and He does not hold grudges. He is wonderful. Counselor, the mighty God, the everlasting Father, and the Prince of Peace. He will never put anyone before you. He will never ridicule you in your situation. He will never laugh at you. He will never leave you lonely. And He'll never bring confusion to your life. He is our Father. He is our Creator. And we can got to put all of our trust in the Lord. Amen. Job said, though he, oh God, though he slay me, yet, yet will I trust him. David said, I will say of the Lord, he is my strong tower, he is my refuge and my fortress, my God, in him I will trust. Solomon said, whoso putteth his trust in the Lord shall be safe. Nahum said, The Lord is good and knoweth them that trust Him. Paul said, Therefore we labor and suffer reproach because we trust in the living God. And I love this part because he says we labor and suffer reproach because we trust in the living God. But then he goes on to say, And again, and again, and again, I will put my trust in in Him. To Noah He said, build an ark for the saving of your house. It's going to rain and everybody's going to die except those that are in the ark. Noah built the ark and he was safe. To Moses He said, go get my people from bondage. I will have you lead them to the promised land. And He did it with His mighty hand. To Daniel who kept on praying he honored him by shutting the mouth of the lions. To Shadrach, Meshach, and Abednego, he didn't keep them from the fire, but he did not let the fire hurt them nor affect them. And the best part is that he went with them to make sure it didn't happen. David proclaimed in Psalm 37, I have been young and now am old, and I have never and I have never, and I have never seen the righteous forsaken or his seed begging for bread. He has never failed. My Savior, Lord Jesus Christ, has never failed. Not one time has He let anyone down, and I still stand before you declaring I will trust Him. I don't care what the world says. I don't care what the world feels. I don't care what's going on in your life, their life, or anybody else's life. The Lord has never failed. He's never let you down. I would encourage you to 
yoke yourself together with him. He said, take my yoke upon you and learn of me. For I am meek and lowly at heart and you shall find rest. I said, you shall find rest for your soul. <laughs> Philippians tells us in Paul's writings to the church at Philippi, be careful for nothing, but in everything with prayer and supplication, let your requests be made known unto God. And the peace of God that passeth all understanding shall keep, shall guard your hearts and minds through Christ Jesus. Let me tell you something, saints of God. I see it in the midst even of our, of our saints in this local church. You see it everywhere you go. You see it in the grocery store. You see it in Walmart. You hear it and see it on the news. Read it in the newspaper. The world needs to know that there's one that you can trust. The world needs to know that there's a God that won't let you down. The world needs to be introduced to a Savior that you can put your trust in. Amen. David said some trust in horses. And some in chariots. Some people trust in the things of the world. Some people trust in your pocketbook. Some people trust in your physical ability. Some people trust in so many different things. But he said, we will remember the name. We will remember the name. I said, we will remember the name of the Lord our God. Proverbs 3, 5 and 6 says, Trust in the Lord with all thy heart. I said, trust in the Lord with all thy heart and lean not unto thine own understanding. Don't try to rationalize it. Don't try to make Him fit into your world. Don't try to make Him fit into your plans. Just trust the Lord with all your heart. Though it looks like the clouds are overhead, though it looks like that there's going to be too much month at the end of the money, though it looks like this disease might get the best of you, though it looks like everything's going to fall apart, just trust in the Lord. Just trust in the Lord with all thy heart. Just trust in the Lord with all thy heart and lean not to thine own understanding. In all thy ways acknowledge Him and He shall direct thy paths. And He shall direct thy paths. In our text Isaiah 12 and 2 Isaiah said, Behold God is my salvation. Thinking about Sister Casey's song tonight. Take me to the King. Don't have much to bring me. The old song my wife used to sing says all I had to offer him was brokenness and strife. But he made something beautiful. But he made something beautiful out of my life. We have got to learn to trust the Lord. Our fear of trusting people has crept into our relationship with God. We begin to quit. We, we question things that we never used to question. We would, the devil can use, oh God, help me right now. The devil can use things against us that he was never able to use before. The devil can, can make us question things that never was a possibility before. I remember as a child, there would be folks every now and again that would let down on holiness, that would walk away, but, but they still kept on believing Jesus' name, baptism. They keep on believing the necessity of the Holy Ghost, but now they're walking away from us in droves preaching a new gospel, preaching a different gospel, Brother Pete, that the, the, the devil has planted this, oh God, have mercy, the devil has planted and that distrust that we have for our fellow man has crept into our life with God, Brother Robbie, and we're not even sure if we trust the book anymore. Because as we read it, I told the leadership group this morning that we're going to do some memorization of scriptures. We have got to hide that word in our heart. That word is forever settled in heaven. Whether you believe it or not doesn't change the effectiveness of it. We have got to grab a hold of it. We have a hope that's the anchor of the soul. And it's in our trust that no matter what comes or goes, it doesn't matter what's going on, good times, bad times, mountains or valleys, I've got to keep trusting the Lord. In sickness or in health, if you let me use that, i got to keep trusting the Lord. But life, 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 realities of life punching us in the face have decayed our trust in God. Some trust in horses. Some trust in chariots. But Isaiah said, God is my salvation. When's he talking about? Where is he talking about? 
In what situation is he talking about? I would tell you, in all of them. In all of them. God is my salvation. Whatever you're going through, God is the answer. I was reminded uh, during the song service tonight, uh, I was reminded of the centurion uh, that according to Jesus Christ uh, had the greatest faith uh, that he ever encountered. Uh, and all it was, there was no great uh, pontification that went on. Uh, there was no great orators and, and nothing great was said. Uh, and there wasn't a lot of music going on. Uh, and it wasn't even in a, in a great atmosphere. Uh, but it was just birthed from a need. Uh, it was just birthed from a desire to see his servant and heal and he said oh God help me right now he said if you just speak the word he said if you just speak the word my servant shall be healed we have no record of the Lord ever performing a miracle for him we have no record of there being a bunch of healings in his life that would build his faith up. But he just heard about Jesus of Nazareth. It was a, that Jesus of Nazareth was somebody you could trust. That you could take your problems to and you could trust him. God have mercy on us. I pray before we leave here tonight that every one of us has got our hands lifted and they're wide open. That we have really cast every care upon him. That we've really cast all our burdens on him. That we've cast every every situation on him and we declare I'm going to keep on being faithful I'm going to keep on giving even when it looks like my giving hurts me I'm going to keep on being faithful in everything I do because the only hope I have the only rock solid thing that we have they talk about death and taxes all they want to but the one rock solid thing we have is our trust in the Lord God Almighty <laughs> And I'm glad, Brother Johnny, I'm glad to find out, to come to the realization that it ain't, it ain't all in a feeling. Uh, and, I, and, I, and I don't mean to be sacrilegious, uh, but it's, matter of fact, very little in a feeling. Behold, God is my salvation. I will trust. I will trust and not be afraid. I'm not sure how it worked. I've just heard about it talked all my life. And it, again, it's probably wrong to talk about it in church. But there used to be something called copper in your bets. Y'all ever heard of that before? Copper in your bets. That was a way that they would, they would place down one, one coin on one particular thing. And then they would go bet on the other guy a little bit more money. So that way they won either way. Kind of, kind of like that deal. We, we try to make everything a sure thing. We try to make everything. We, we only want to. We, we only want to make ourselves vulnerable in a sure situation. We, we want to try to keep get every point covered. Well, that's not the way you live for God. I said that's not the way you live for God. I will trust and not be afraid. What, how many of you have ever ever been in, in, in leadership classes and stuff where they do the old, uh, uh, old old trust thing where you stand here and there's nobody and, and there, there's nothing behind you to sit down and you got to just fall back and let your team members catch you? Y'all y'all familiar with that? Any of you familiar with that? What, what, the re why in the world are they having to teach that in the day and age we live in? Huh? Why are they having to teach that, brother Billy? It's called people don't trust one another. Right. I told you all the story, the, the illustration where you set a chair down behind an adult uh, and every time they'll, they'll feel back and make sure it's there. But a child, you tell them to sit down, they'll jump up and plop on it and never even take a look. Because if I tell my kids to sit down, Sister Sharon, they believe me that a chair is there. We've got to get that same kind of faith, that childlike faith in God. Yeah. Trust the well. Trust the well. Behold, God is my salvation. I will trust and not be afraid. For the Lord Jehovah is my strength and my song. Hmm. He is my strength and He is my song. He is my strength. He told Paul, my grace is sufficient for thee. Paul had to trust the Lord. Though I feel, Brother Rice, that the Lord was letting him know, I ain't healing you. I 
sought the Lord thrice for Him to heal me. But the Lord said, My strength is made perfect in your weakness. And Paul said, I realize that when I'm weak, then, then am I strong. What kind of trust does it take uh, to, 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 to put your whole self into a God that takes your weakness? That takes your weakness and your inadequacies and somehow can bring strength out of it? Doesn't work in a, in a, in a carnal mindset. I will trust and not be afraid. The Lord Jehovah is my strength and my song. Well, what's it mean when he says he's my song? Thought about Sister Connie testifying tonight, which I surprised her. Y'all don't know it, but I did. But she started telling about the good things the Lord has done throughout the year. Let me tell you something. It ain't, it ain't just got to have music and it ain't got to be in the right key. But when you begin to tell of the good things that the Lord has done for you, ladies and gentlemen, you've just been given a song. When you tell about the blessings that the Lord has done for you, when you stand up and you tell about the goodness of the Lord, about the healing and the miracle and the blessings of the Lord, and i got to let you know there's no greater trust displayed than when you can stand up and brag on God when all hell has come loose in your life. He also is become my salvation. He also has become my salvation. <laughs> Heard a preacher preach one time, Mississippi camp meeting. Had a Jewish rabbi friend that he met with all the time. And they were discussing Isaiah chapter number 12, verse number 2. And he said, Mr. Rabbi, how is that how is that passage translated in the actual Hebrew? And he he pushed him off. He pushed him off. And he said, Come on, Rabbi, how is this passage actually translated in the original Hebrew? And he said, Okay, you're not going to let me go. Brother McKinney, he said, The Lord Jehovah is my strength. And my song, he also is become my Jesus. The name Jesus means Jehovah is my salvation. Or Jehovah saves. And Isaiah was giving us prophetic insight into that there was a Savior coming. He is Lord God Almighty had wrapped himself in the likeness of sinful flesh. And he became our salvation. Verse number 3. Therefore with joy. Shall ye draw water out of the wells of salvation? I preached some time ago about water and about the, the, the water part of, the, of the, the, how they would take pitchers of water and pour it on the altar as a sacrifice. So, uh, uh, in, in the Feast of, of Tabernacles, I believe it was, uh, that they, the Feast of uh, Celebrating the Harvest. Uh, and to, to us today, water just doesn't mean what it did to them. But I can tell you unequivocally, I've seen it happen before. If any of you go into your house tonight, and you walk over to the sink, and you turn on the spigot, and nothing comes out, you turn it off again. And then you turn it on again. And you tap on the, on the faucet head that's coming out. Then you try the hot water, turn it on and turn it off. And if nothing comes out, you will be alarmed. You never give any thank, any thought to it. It's just a natural thing. We'll stand there and turn it on and let it rip because we know that the water is coming out of that faucet. That's what a well was to the people that Isaiah is speaking to. It was every day, Brother Terry, they were going to go and let that bucket down into the well and they were going to draw up the water and fill their pitcher from that bucket and they were trusting in the well to help them through life. They had to believe, Brother Terry, that every time they went to the well, there was going to be a blessing there. Now, we don't always look at it as a blessing. But, Brother McKinney, when you fill that glass up with water and it parches your cool throat, uh, let me tell you, it's a blessing. There's so many things that God has given us. Uh, the Bible says every good and perfect gift comes from above, uh, from the Father of light, uh, within whom there is no variableness nor shadow of turning. Uh, yes, even a glass of water is a blessing from God. But without thinking, 
We just walk up, fill it up. I get aggravated at the kids. They'll come in from school. They'll get them a drink at 3 o'clock out of one glass, take a couple sips out of it, set it on the counter. And about 4 o'clock, they'll be thirsty again. And they'll go to the cabinet and get them another glass. Take a couple sips out of it. By the time we go to bed, there'll be six or eight glasses of water sitting on the counter, Brother Billy. We'll walk over and we'll dump them out because it's just become such routine. Routine. Everybody say routine. Routine. How, nobody wakes up in the morning. Nobody wakes up in the morning and says, who's going to the well today? But we'll go and we'll turn on the washer, we'll turn on the dishwasher, we'll run a bath in every tub in the house, and we just take for granted it's going to happen. When in reality, you trust in the spigot. You trust in it, but, but it's always, oh God help me right now. But it's always there. It's always there. It's always there. Jesus' day and Isaiah's day, there's no guarantee that it was going to be there. But let me tell you how it would happen. We've seen it in the New Testament. They would come with their water pot from town. They would come out to the well, Jacob's well, for instance. Remember I passed you a picture around of Jacob's well. It's still in existence today. They would let their bucket down. They would crank it up on a windlass or something of the sort, maybe even by hand. They would take it out and they would dump it in their jug. They would take it home and it would last them for their washing, for their housekeeping, for their cooking. When the jug was empty again, they either had to go back to the well or had to wait till the next day. But it was with great expectation that they cranked that bucket up out of the well. But Brother Terry, imagine the heartbreak. Imagine the hopelessness when the bucket came to the top and there was nothing in it. We have become so entitled in our relationship with God that we just automatically assume He's going to be there. We automatically assume that when we show up that we go through our little choreographed services and we do have them. Anytime we do anything different, I remember Brother Pete used to make us, just, just to shake things up, he'd have everybody stand, and everybody on this side move over to that side. And everybody on this side move over to that side. You ought to see the people. Eyeball in their seat. And want to tell the person who's sitting there, you better take care of that. I'll be back there next week. Don't get used to it. Remember that, Brother Pete? We, we, got, we get so used to doing things the same way all the time and just take it for granted. We wind the monkey up and he's going to dance till the, till the crank stops turning. We've got to fight against the Laodicean spirit. We have got to fight against it. When the children of Israel, I'm coming to a close. I hope I've helped you tonight. When the children of Israel went into Canaan, Joshua told them as influenced by God, he said, you're going to eat from fields you didn't plant. And you're going to drink from wells that you didn't dig. You're going to enjoy Wine from vineyards you didn't plant. You're going to live in houses you didn't build. When we show up, you come to the music. When we show up at church and the Spirit moves, the Holy Ghost moves, you feel something, you feel encouraged. Feel the spirit. Maybe get a few hand claps going and shoulders jumping up and down and a little bit of responding to the Holy Ghost. We have no idea where it came from. I remember a buddy of mine one time. Huh. 
the power went out, Brother McKinney. And his wife called him from work. At work, I was working with him. And his wife called him and said, Will the